Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video we are going to practically demonstrate some of the important exercises based on Brunstrom therapy concept that can be utilized by a physiotherapist to retrain and develop wrist stabilization that is required for hand grasping activities in a stroke or a hemiplegia patient. Now we have already done a video in detail in which we have mentioned the seven important stages for the hemiplegic hand recovery. And from this, a physiotherapist should gain this knowledge that how reflexively we can start training the finger flexion movements and then gradually we need to progress to developing the voluntary grasp and releasing functions. Now what is important to be noted is that the hemiplegic hand has a tendency to become spastic in the flexor direction. And the reason for this is that normally our hand is flexor dominant in nature. That means whatever activity we do in our daily living comprises of more of the grasping functions as compared to that of the releasing activities. Immediately after the onset of stroke, when the patient is still in the acute stage and there is no or little function in the hemiplegic hand, the patient has the tendency to use the normal hand for all the ADL activities. And because of the associated reactions and imitation synkinesis which we have described before, the flexor dominant nature of the hand and the tendency to use more of the flexor muscles on the normal side results in reflexive and uncontrolled stimulation of the flexor muscles of the hemiplegic hand. And so there is an early imbalance between the stimulation of the flexor and the extensor muscles. And therefore it is recommended that the physiotherapist should focus upon training alternate movements that is both the closing and the opening activities so that later on the hand flexor tone does not become uncontrolled and then interfere with the releasing activities. Also it is important to be mentioned at this point that excessive or indiscriminate use of rubber or spongy balls in the hemiplegic hand for the purpose of grip strengthening should be discouraged as it only serves to create further imbalance between the flexor and the extensor muscles. Overuse of the flexor muscles makes it more difficult for the therapist as well as the patient to develop volitional finger extension movements at the later stages. So now keeping this important information in mind, let's move forward towards understanding how a physiotherapist should progress next towards developing the wrist stabilization that is required for the finger grasping activities. As in a normal individual, we know that there is a strong linkage between the wrist extension and finger flexion movements. But in the stroke patient, this linkage is lost. Therefore, from the early stages of rehabilitation, a physiotherapist should induce wrist extension movements along with the pushing activities and try to link the wrist extension with the elbow extension movement during the early stages of hemiplegia recovery. Local stimulatory techniques like tapping, rubbing, squeezing, deliverance of stretch and resistance should also be utilized to further increase the efferent discharges and patient's voluntary effort in maintaining the wrist in extension position. So like for example, right from the stage two and stage three, an exercise can be designed as follows. The physiotherapist can place the hemiplegic upper limb in the extensor synergy position and then can place a ball in the hand of the patient and then passively extend the wrist. And now the therapist can use the local stimulatory techniques like tapping, rubbing, squeezing and then ask the patient to squeeze the ball tightly and then don't let the wrist fall down. And again when the patient is trying to squeeze the ball and maintain the wrist in extension, the therapist can continue with the stimulatory procedures to activate the muscle spindles and gain reflexive extension movements by improving or strengthening the muscle stretch reflex of the wrist extensor muscles. Now it is also important to note that when the therapist is training the patient to squeeze and maintain the wrist in extension, at the same time emphasis also needs to be given upon training the patient to voluntary squeeze and also to relax or stop squeezing. This will enable the patient to gain voluntary control over stimulating the finger flexor muscles and relaxing it. 
patient at all point of time is encouraged to superimpose the volitional effort over the reflexively gained movements and it is also important to note that as soon as possible the therapist starts using the resistance against the patient's voluntary effort and also facilitates all three types of muscle contraction for the wrist extensor muscle that is squeeze and hold your wrist do not let it fall down will be an isometric contraction relax stop squeezing and take your wrist down but slowly would be an eccentric contraction squeeze back again and move your wrist up would be a concentric contraction now once the patient gains voluntary control and is able to maintain the wrist in extended position while the squeezing activity the next progression of the exercises would be to train wrist extension and wrist stabilization in varying position of elbow and shoulder so that means now gradually the patient need to perform the wrist extension movement with a flexed elbow with an abducted shoulder so this would be the progression of the exercises so now the exercise strategies that were described in detail to break the flexor and the extensor synergies as well as to retrain the forearm pronation and supination movements will now be utilized by the therapist to gain further voluntary control over the wrist extension movement and the wrist stabilization in varying combination of the elbow and the shoulder movements utilizing task oriented training using hold after positioning technique training in reverse training in small ranges and using all three types of muscle contraction these are some of the important neuro rehabilitation secrets that a physiotherapist must utilize to ensure successful therapy outcomes in our upcoming video we will be practically demonstrating a very important hand manipulation technique that can be utilized by a physiotherapist to successfully unlock a flexor spastic hemiplegic hand and this will also enable the therapist to facilitate finger extension and releasing functions in their patients so see you all in our next video till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected